How to build a Blackgate Sweet Pea 5 inch gauge locomotive, part 68. Initial machining plus drilling and tapping of the cast iron piston blanks in a small lathe. I bought these piston blanks from Blackgate's engineering and I was surprised to find that Matt had chopped a piece of bar in half. I would have preferred to use just a long stick of cast iron, put it in a larger lathe, then I could machine and part off the piston blanks in one operation. I want to show you which metals you shouldn't make pistons from, and while I was looking for some, I found this, just to show how I make axle boxes. Notice that the flange is only on one side. I mentioned this in a previous episode, so I thought I would show it. And it is, of course, nothing to do with the piston making job. In this clip, this is all I need to successfully make a pair of pistons. The bit in the middle is what's left of one of the original pistons. I will drill this a quarter of an inch diameter and machine across the front of it. More about that later. You can't use just any old piece of metal to make pistons. This is a piece of aluminium which is unsuitable for making pistons for a couple of reasons, one being the coefficient of linear expansion. Aluminium expands more than cast iron and electrolytic corrosion could also be a problem. This is a piece of stainless steel and I could make the pistons using this, but it's really not worth the effort. Cast iron is slightly better because it will tolerate a lack of lubrication for a limited period only. The piece of brass, apart from being the wrong size, is an absolute no-no. Do not use brass to make pistons for cast iron cylinders. These are the parts I'm going to use. I already now have a pair of piston rods that are the right length, and these two cast iron cylinder blanks. They currently are not the right diameter, but that's good, because you turn them to the finished diameter much later on in the job. Here are the sweet pea piston rings I bought a while ago, and now I'll be able to use them because I will machine the grooves to suit these rings. The grooves in the original pistons were miles too big, and the rings all rattled about in the groove, which is no good at all. Here I have a kit of parts, I just need to make the pistons. I take one of the blanks and fit it into the chuck. About halfway will be okay. It's not too important that it runs perfectly concentrically. The surface of this cast iron is not very good for holding in a chuck for anything other than initial machining operations. Here I'm facing across the front. There are probably many different ways to do this, but this is the way I do it. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I would have much preferred just a stick of cast iron, but anyway, I'm working with what I have. It's good for a learning curve anyway. I need to face across the front of the piece and make it nice and flat and smooth. The final finish will be obtained in my larger lathe with everything mounted in a collet chuck. This is the front of the piston which will be machined away considerably from what you see it here. So it really doesn't matter if there are some rings in it. What is important is that this piston must not under any circumstances be machined to the finished diameter at this stage. In this clip I'm using a 2 inch micrometer to measure the original piston. And in this demonstration you can see how much bigger the blank is than the finished piston. That's OK and exactly as it needs to be. If I turn the piston down to finished size at this stage, the job will be ruined. I'm taking a longitudinal cut as far as I can without hitting the chuck jaws. Once this is done, I can turn the part around in the chuck and I know that the front face is square to the longitudinal cut. You really don't need to worry about the finish on the front of the piston because a lot of this will be turned away as the thickness of the piston is reduced to its finished size of 5 eighths of an inch. Now I turn the part around in the chuck and I'm holding it by the machined area. In this clip I'm taking a good facing cut across the front. In fact I'm taking a few facing cuts across the front. I may as well reduce the thickness of the piston starting at this stage. When I finish the piston it will be mounted on the piston rod in a collet in my larger lathe. Most of these cuts are rough cuts, but one side of the piston will need to have a good surface finish, and that will be the side that fits nearest the piston rod. At the moment you are looking at the rough facing cut. 
Here's the original piston and you can see that it's a good bit smaller than the blank. What I need to do now is extremely boring because it's exactly the same as you've just seen but on the other piston blank. I'm running these sequences at eight times normal speed just to get through the repetition a little bit quicker. The principle is identical in every way to machining the other piston blank. Here I'm double checking the size of the original piston and comparing it as I previously did on the other piston to make sure that I'm not removing too much metal. Now it's time to drill the hole down the middle and thread it to BA. But first of all I need to use a centre drill followed by a 5 30 seconds of an inch twist drill which is an imperial tapping size for 2BA. It's what I've always used anyway. In the home workshop you have to turn cast iron quite slowly but when it comes to drilling depending on the size of the twist drill that you're using you can run the lathe quite fast. This by the way is going to be the rear of the piston and I'll let the centre drill go in just a fraction more than I should have done which will accommodate the unthreaded part of the piston rod. With a 2BA tap in the tailstock chuck I'm threading the hole 2BA. The video is running at 800% because I did this by hand and it did take quite a while. And here I'm screwing the finished piston blank onto the piston rod and it's a perfect fit and the thread feels good. The next thing I need to do is very important. I'm making a washer to go between the collet chuck and the piston and the best thing to use is the original piston but I need to make sure that it's well machined and perfectly square. Pushing the part into the main chuck with the tailstock chuck does make it square so that's good. I'm machining away quite a lot of metal because I don't want this to be too big. It just needs to be a thick washer and you may have noticed that the hole in the centre is now a quarter of an inch in diameter which takes the old piston rod that I'm not using. I'm going to use this old piston rod as the first mandrel and as I tighten up the collet you can see the principle of what's happening. There's still a way to go to make these two finished pistons. More about that in the next episode. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.